As we discussed in Tuesday's video, the journey to realizing our vision, be it an entrepreneurial venture, creative venture, lifestyle, or whatever you want, is a matter of letting our attention be oriented from the vision. And as a result, we don't experience any unnecessary distraction or allow ourselves to be swayed, to believe that there is anything outside more powerful than your vision is to subconsciously say that something outside can sway you from your vision, which is not true. Today we are discussing allowing yourself to believe what you want to believe so you can live the way you want to live. And also flow state, which purifies the mind of irrelevant belief identification in relation to your vision. Children, they allow themselves to believe in their imagination more than suggestions, not in harmony with their vision. A child knows this. Everything originates by the invisible power that plays all roles and dwells within you. And you call upon this power by your imagination. They simply imagine it and then it happens. Precognition permeates the scriptures of the world, actually. And they know this already, without reading about it. And what was once taught to some kids in an inaccurate way, such as, oh, it's just your imagination in relation to what they desire, their vision, has been proven by many as the creative companion of our world by those that honored their vision. For example, if you look around, you'll see... All entrepreneurial invention, innovation, creative expression, lifestyle, or whatever was once first imagined, somebody said, that's the way it is, and it happened. We may have heard thoughts of this does not work or that does not work. Those are all beliefs. What I found is that it works for me because I say it does. This I that says it does, is your formless self, your awareness of being. In Sanskrit, this is Atman. And that which you associate any concept to that I happens. This world is made up of beliefs, and we want to be aware of what we are believing. So we want to listen to ourselves and trust ourselves from the lens of our vision. And since thoughts of disharmony to our vision, if identified with, become beliefs, we don't have to identify with them. We could let them pass. Like in the Seven Day Mental Diet by Emmett Fox, follow your heart and intuition in matters of your vision. Everything else is secondary, as Steve Jobs mentioned in his commencement speech. So we have seen over the years that what was once considered to be impossible now made possible easily and effortlessly, and I believe we are only beginning to understand this creative power of imagination. Look around nowadays, you simply imagine it and it happens. Even in physical technology, where you can type words into it, speech. And speech is what Hermes once said in the Hermetica, is the image of mind. And then AI gives you images on your prompts and you can further refine them by your speech. In other words, no pun intended, you literally create images simply imagining them into existence like a child. And I like the way that Neville Goddard said it in 1949 in his book, Out of This World. He said, many persons, myself included, have observed events before they occurred, that is, before they occurred in this world of three dimensions. Since we can observe an event before it occurs in the three dimensions of space, life on earth must be proceeding according to plan. And this plan must exist elsewhere in another dimension. If the occurring events were not in this world when they were observed, then to be perfectly logical, they must have been out of this world. So beyond the physical technology that makes it obviously so, the spiritual technology has always existed. You can simply suggest yourself into any vision. 
I am that person now. Here is how reality works. And that's the way it plays out. If we have challenges accepting our own suggestions, suggest it to yourself regularly, and you'll eventually believe it. In the Bible, it says, As you believe, so it shall be done unto you. So release identification to any belief that your vision is not possible and put the law to the test and form your own conclusions. Become a child again. And so I wouldn't turn to a child and tell him it's not possible. Because this is what happened to me. I would listen to Earl Nightingale's Strangest Secret over and over again and everything changed. I did this with Think and Grow Rich. I read it over and over again. I also did this with James Allen's As a Man Thinketh. I would listen to it over and over again until all other conflicting beliefs in relation to how I wanted to be no longer existed in mind. And now I do it with my own videos. I make them for you and I make them for myself. The golden rule. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. Because everyone has the power. And everyone can use it. You speak things into existence. Now, if you're a student of my subconscious mind program, which I organized in 2018 from experience and working with others who succeeded doing the same, and I updated it last year with a workbook and additional stories, also structured generally for applications outside entrepreneurship, since I've applied this to all areas of my life. You know, I put emphasis on creating your own auto suggestions and accepting your own suggestions, and then it happens. That is how the law always works. You have a formless self, I. You associate a suggestion, and that's it. It happens. This is how we believe what we believe now, whether we would label it good, bad, or indifferent by accepting suggestions. And in the earlier stages, perhaps without any conscious discernment of the implications of what suggestions were being accepted. Well, all of that changes from this day. You suggest to yourself and accept your own suggestions in relation to your vision. And if any beliefs play out in a way that seems to sway you from your vision, create self-talk or auto-suggestions and suggest them to yourself and you'll eventually believe them. And from those beliefs, everything happens automatically. Whatever once seemed to appear to throw you off no longer does. As a matter of fact, it no longer seems to exist anymore in mind. I do this as applicable to maintain my flow. By doing this, mind is also completely open to all that is in harmony and contribution to your vision, and distractions no longer exist in consciousness, like a child no longer afraid. And while in this flow, you're not trying to ignore or fake it. This is about an unflinching commitment to your inner voice, which speaks through the lens of your vision. And living from it, you receive the divine suggestions. You don't need mine or anyone's suggestions. If they're helpful, then fine. Listen to yourself and trust yourself. You know the way. What I'm saying here, as I've been saying for many years all throughout these videos, although said differently, and I will continue to say it, is to reveal your own suggestions within and accept your own suggestions in relation to your vision so you operate automatically from those self-suggestions. Imagination is the source of it all. Why wouldn't you not then be able to imagine your own suggestions from your vision, knowing that these thoughts become subconscious beliefs in which you automatically orient from them. If not, what's the alternative? Look around and see what others are believing and accepting those beliefs? Well, that could be helpful if they are in harmony with your vision. And where do you think they got these beliefs from anyways? If from another, where did that person get those beliefs from? And track it back, and you'll find it was first all imagined. So no shame or condemnation, let them be. Generate and accept your own suggestions in relation to your vision. 
Does one believe that another is smarter than them, more authoritative than them about their own life? Think for yourself. Imagine lovingly in relation to your vision and accept your own suggestions. Then there shall be no argument nor walking on eggshells in this world because it is the way you say it is inside. And that's the way it is outside. You see, our attention is valuable, priceless actually, and we want it in the direction of what is in harmony with our vision. Our attention is governed by our subconscious beliefs revealed by how we behave, how we emotionally relate, and you have all the power to change it all inside. People ask me, how do you stay so focused? Well, because I change the distraction-based programming within through auto-suggestion. There's no one to change but self. Of all the labels we give to ourselves, I would not identify with any label that is not in harmony with my vision. Why would you? If there's a good reason, then fine. For example, I say, I'm an entrepreneur. But even that, my definition of an entrepreneur varies in the nuances of definition that others may identify with. And if any restrictive components in relation to that label is not true for you, you don't have to identify with them. Release them and observe how your life plays out upon releasing those unnecessary beliefs in mind. And then when you look at the results, you know you have found that creative power then maybe you'll see it like I do. I believe in not wasting a moment in disharmony, zero. Because every moment is precious. In the Hermetica, it was stated that two gifts were bestowed on humanity. They were mind and speech. And a child's mind is blank born into this world. A blank canvas and inner speech, their paint. And these gifts were said to be equal to immortality. Wise use of them were equal to immortality. I don't believe people choose to live in disharmony consciously. That is programming allowed into the subconscious without conscious discernment, which we can release with flow, which we'll talk about in a moment. Past programming is revealed by act and circumstances on the journey to realizing a vision, as James Allen once said. Act is the blossom of thought. He also said, This does not mean that circumstances at any given time are an indication of the entire character, but that those circumstances are so intimately connected with some vital thought element within that for the time being, they are indispensable to development. So the part of circumstances being indispensable to development, let's discuss this further. I remember when I only cared about the destination. I didn't care the way I got there. I got there many times, miserable along the way to getting there, not valuing the two gifts of mind and speech on the journey as well in relation to what showed up by act or circumstance and see it as an opportunity to change it because you can change it all. So then I made it only about the journey, which, again, is another bias in my mind of one being better than another. So I found that I like to have a vision because I had desires and those desires were satisfied by a vision. So I reconciled them. Now I value both the journey and the destination. That's inner peace. One of my earlier mentors said this to me. You're going to have the business success, he said. The question is, what vehicle are you going to take to get there? Is it going to be a Cadillac or, I don't remember what other car he mentioned, but nowhere as premium as a Cadillac. And it was his metaphorical way of saying, because he spoke in metaphors, value each day. Turn what you love into a business. Do what you love each day. And whatever you do, do it with love. Enjoy each moment. And I would say, that is a wise use of the two gifts of mind and speech, a harmonious relationship between journey and destination. So to simplify this reconciliation, enter flow. When you are in flow, your inner speech is accurate from your vision. You are deeply engaged. Mind is purified. 
and you re-become your ideal self. I see flow as alchemy, the refinement of mind into pure gold. And thus, those that live a flow-based life, you'll see them. Entrepreneurs, athletes, professionals, creative, or whatever they would label themselves or not, everything they touch turns to gold, and you are no different. Flow is the premium journey to the destination, the great reconciler of journey and destination, and a purifier of mind in relation to act and circumstances. And thus, they change accordingly. It all happens at the same time. So by showing up each day and doing the things I'm going to do anyways, I might as well do them from a place of flow. I'll link to a few videos in the description that I made this year with regards to flow, and I trust you'll enjoy those as well. If you commit to flow, you'll see you'll become childlike again, magic all around you. By simply imagining, instantly those things will happen. And so that's my goal. So I have a morning routine, a work day, end of day, and during the entire day, my goal is to direct my mind consciously on whatever initiative I commit to and do it from a place of flow. I'll emphasize that again. From flow, not from forcing, stressing, drifting, or anything like that. Flow all the way. So clear distinction. Not just doing things. Doing things from a place of flow. Flowing from your vision. This is the way I found to accelerate success. So if you want it better, easier, and faster, flow is the way. As a matter of fact, you'll find that when you're in your flow, you'll actually do a lot less or sometimes very little or even nothing. And everything happens. For example, while I'm in my flow. So many other projects get completed in the background, seemingly on their own. People call me out of the blue and want to do deals. I step out of my office for lunch, walk into a restaurant, and everybody wants to talk to me. Zero resistance. It's pure magic. Here's how you could do it as well. Again, I've discussed this with many nuanced distinctions in my flow videos over the years. I trust you'll find them all helpful with specific instructions for your specific scenarios. First, we have clear goals at an abstract and granular level. So we have a vision, and granular level is current initiative, whatever it may be. Working out, creative project, making a video, putting together a proposal, doing a sales call, whatever you know is related to your vision. And you could even do this with things you consider not related. I do this with snowboarding, for example. Then we have immediate reporting and feedback. So this is about how we feel while we're doing what we know we want to do. We want to feel in the flow. This is a feeling thing. Feeling is the secret. The way is to get started. And I feel into it, or you could also go with an intention prior, like magic word flow. Watch that video. I'll link in the description. Then you're performing the activity. You'll notice that you'll start enjoying it. You feel your inherent self-confidence, and you may notice some feedback, yet you'll enjoy it. For example, putting together these videos, I let my mind go blank, and then an idea shows up, and I roll with it. I don't judge it. I simply let it be the first step. And that is actually how every video starts out. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I trust my imagination will reveal the way. Now, as I'm going about the initiative, I'm aware of how I feel and how I think, and I release any mental rigidity or tension in the moment. Simply assume it, release it. And then as the feedback is presented, for example, in a sales presentation, objections, I may say to myself, yeah, everything is going to be fine. They want to do the deal or something like that as I read their body language. What they say, how they say it, I'm aware of how I relate inside to what they are saying. And I then feel the congruence. So I might say inside, it's all good, no matter what they say. And that's the power. Full self-acceptance. Ideal now, then we have harmony between challenge and skill. So the wonderful thing is that we have an infinite source of skill ready to be expressed while in flow, which is alpha brainwave state, which also the neurotransmitters are released. Lateral thinking is experienced. 
harmony between divergent and convergent thinking, you actually fall deeper in love with what you're doing. Heart and brain coherence and all other magical things that we might not consciously know of yet. I tend to get psychic visions or creative ideas, magical inner voice conversations, and all of that tangibly contributes to overcoming any seeming challenges during the initiatives, and the creative result is phenomenal. And again, it's all done by how I went about doing it because one could just show up and go through the motions, or they could put their heart into it. That's what I'm talking about here. And so then here's where things start to get even more interesting. Actions and awareness become one. Body feels like it's moving on its own, operating ideally. In conversations, for example, everything you say is spot on. You're dialed in. Conversational dance. And it doesn't even seem like I'm thinking anymore. Everything is happening. It does not even feel like I'm doing anything, yet everything is happening. There's no distractions, no fear, no indecision, no overthinking, no emotional turmoil. And this can go on for hours. And then the final product is there. Behind the scenes, the mental transformations are occurring. Mind is purifying. Seeming paradoxes are reconciled. It feels like an invisible hand entered into my brain and rewired it. In relation to the start of the video, here's the wonderful thing. No confusion. No distraction. They don't exist. Lighthearted focus. Unwavering from the vision. And this very being of flow. Also reprograms your subconscious mind for success. You feel more like yourself. You feel your way through life. As a matter of fact, life feels like a lucid dream. That's how it feels for me now, from making flow a priority in 2017. And I trust it'll be the same for you. So make flow your priority, and it shall include everything you desire. And on that note, I'll see you in the flow. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You can say, everything shows up by simply imagining Everywhere I go, as everything within awareness turns to symbolic representations of my inner gold. For gold I am, and gold I draw from within. The gold is pushed out in all that I say and do, in a flow-based way, transmuting every suggestion into how I imagine it to be. The inner suggestions from the vision of my heart's desire. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.